the danger of Tinobu's wealth without enterprise. This is coming from Reno Mockery. Thank you very much for joining us. The Serious Matters on the TV. This is Olupunle Abraham. Uh, please do share our videos with others. Like our videos and please do drop your comment. Make them simple and simple. This is going to be a bit very, a bit lengthy. Not too lengthy, but then you're going to enjoy it so that uh, because I've listened to Reno Mockery uh, and severally even though I don't know, it's not everything that he says that I like. I don't agree with everything he says. Um, I feel he goes in and out of, you know, matters and issues. Until recently, I saw a video where he, I mean, he was tackled by Rufai of um, Arise TV. And, you know, it, it, was, it was an interesting interview where that young man tackled him. <laughs> Well, let's go straight to this particular one. He said in this edition of the alternative, hashtag alternative, I'm going to extract a statement made by the Minister of Labor, State of, for Labor and Productivity, uh, more accurately, unproductivity. <laughs> state, the Minister of State uh, for Labor and Unproductivity, Festus Kiyama, who also doubles as, or majors as the spokesperson for the Bola Tinobu Presidential Campaign Council. In a recent interview, to a board in the media bullet outlet, Mr. Kiyama said that Shiwajo Tinobu is a world creator. He is an expert in world creation and what the country badly needs now is about world creation. He is someone who turned around the fortune of Lagos. This issue of Lagos, 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 Lagos thing. I'm tired of hearing it. I think we should talk about something else. Huh? And the revenue of Lagos. Some people said the debts of Lagos also went up. Yes, of course. Debt going up is an indication that you are now credit worthy. With that heavy debt, no creditor is complaining. So I, I, maybe all the people who are plenty money in Nigeria are owing somebody, you know, to really show that um, for you to for you to be credit worthy, for you to be able to say you are okay up there, you must be owing somebody. Well, let us interrogate his claim on the mer on their merits. Is Tinubu truly a world creator? I have proved beyond all reasonable doubt that Bola Tinobu was associated with drug money and up till now there is no explanation for him from him. That is a fact. It is backed up by documents, you know, documentary evidence. What we know may just be the tip of the iceberg. Drug cartels are very secretive and destructive organizations and their secrets are only known to them and intelligence agencies around the world. And that is why Bolatinobu is a security risk. His cartel members and foreign and domestic intelligence agencies will have compromising information on him. And that means that he would be vulnerable to them. Hmm. That's the man you want to vote, or some persons want to vote as a, 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 as a president. Now, I, I, saw, I saw a particular caption where uh, it was credited to Bishop David Oedipo to have said that uh, uh, the number of people who vote for APC in the coming election will tell us how many mad people we have in the country. Well, this organization may have photos, documents, records, and other damaging information on Mr. Tinobu, which they can use to bind him uh, to their design. It is just too risky to have that type of character at the end of affairs. And that, that, that's, that's, that's very, very interesting. Because if this is true, then that means that if he becomes president, he could be held to ransom. And he will want to dance to their tune. And so you just find out that he's not the one running the affairs of the country. An invisible hand is, is tailoring the affairs um, of, the, of, of the country. You know, a compromised president would be a puppet, a patsy, and a potty in the hands of a blackmailer. That's the truth. It becomes easy to blackmail him. No nation on earth can afford such a number one citizen. Even the United States, perhaps the most stable democracy on earth, could not take that risk after the Watergate incident because President Richard Nixon had become vulnerable. One of the Watergate burglars be demanded blackmail money of $1 million from Nixon as now this, I mean, the classified transcript of White House meeting reveals. At the meeting which occurred on March 21st, 1973 at the White House, Nixon had said on the morning, if you need the money, you could get that. You could get a million dollars. You could get it in cash. I know where it could be gotten. It is not easy, but it could be done. But the question is who the hell would handle it? And any idea on that? 12 hours after that meeting, he 
Alhard Hunt Jr., one of the Watergate conspirators, received $75,000 in cash, and it was that payment that made Nixon's position untenable because it was evidence of an attempt to obstruct justice by Nixon himself. And that was a major reason why Nixon had to go, because he had become vulnerable. If he could be blackmailed by a bunch of burglars, imagine what could be done by foreign intelligence against agencies. And what Tinobu is, or was, involved in is more sordid than Watergate's. I mean, these are revelations that we should not look away from. Please. 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 He's not even, this guy is not even talking about, uh, he's not even talking about Atiku. He's not talking about Atiku in recent time. He's not even talking about Atiku. He talks about the Labour Party because the obedience attack him. But on Tinubu matter, he has been, you know, in and out, you know, checking facts about him. He said that a similar scenario is playing out in Serbia, where President Alex, Alex, uh, Alexander uh, Vucic is embroiled in a major scandal of which he is accused of taking decisions contrary to Serbia's national interest because a foreign power is aware of a crime he committed and is using that to blackmail him. And then again, it has now been exposed by the classified U.S. cable that former Colombia President Alvaro Uribe had ties to drug cartels and they were able to blackmail him to take certain actions. Those are things that we risk if we close our eyes to the realities and the revelations before us. Nigeria does not need that right now. We have too many pressing challenges that present a clear and present threats to our national well-being. We do not need to add to them the most or the almost unsurmountable issue of having a fatally flooded or flawed president who is tied to a white hero in drug ring. Such an individual could be manipulated into taking out unfavorable loans that only makes Nigeria indebted or uh, independent in name only or to appoint, to appoint other similarly, similarly fatally flawed persons into sensitive national positions. And so we, our independence is just going to be by name. Then we will be owing heavily. Already around the world, when you are in Niger when you are as a Nigerian citizen, bring out your green passport, you are stigmatized and given the look, you know what I mean? In long immigration lines, you are taken aside and treated as a, as a suspect. That's what Nigerians face outside there. Now, close your eyes and imagine how much worse this will get if we elect a non-drug law, Lord, as our president. Nigerians out us, I mean, ought to research what happened to the Colombia passport when it was be delivered. That I mean, believe that their then president had ties to the drug cartel. I don't know, want us to take too much time. I don't want us to say to, to go too far. I, I'll pick. I'll take this line again. He said, "Why Tinumbu, who can't solve the mystery of his own really identity, is promising to solve Nigeria's problem?" And Rabi Okwakwanso, who built a school in Niger Republic with Nigerian government money, Kano State Fund, at a time while Asu was on strike, is promising to resolve the current Asu strike. My people, no be juju be that, huh? No, be juju be that. Look at this line too. Bola Tinubu is number one exponent of wealth without enterprise. Nobody can say where his money comes from. We just know that he is rich. If you ask any promoter of Bola Tinubu presidential ambition to name his source of wealth, they get offended instead of being proud. Yes, they cannot tell us. They cannot tell us. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission goes around southern Nigeria arresting young men living flashy lifestyles without known source of income. Meanwhile, they are silent as Tinubu without a known source of income as passed to be their commander-in-chief. No be juju be that. <laughs> no be juju be that. Right there, we have another obvious red flag. Being rich without a known source of income is one of the hallmark of drug cartels. And we know for a fact that Bola Tinubu was a member of a white hero in drug cartel as of 1992. And if he cannot prove the source of his wealth, then there is every reason to believe he never left that cartel. We already have unknown gunmen. We do not need unknown wealthy men. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> this is interesting. He said, if you run a search at the Corporate Com Affairs Commission, you will have at almost 40 businesses linked to Waziri Atiku Abubakar. You will find Peter Obi, but you won't find Tinubu's business. Where are his billions from? Well, let us drop it. Let's 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 uh, let's let's cut it here. And please do drop a comment. Make them simple and simple. What do you think about this particular development uh, and these particular reactions from Reno Mercury, former aide to former president, good luck, Jonathan. Uh, you know. Um, who has been coming up with revelations about this, uh, the APC presidential candidate, Ashiwa Jibola Ahmed Sinobo. Please do drop a comment, make them simple and say, we'll drop your, uh, uh, make them simple and say, well, please do share our videos with others also. Please like our videos. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.